All right, Shalom Rastafari. This is a quick vid right here. Um, this is a video on the YouTube. It's called Babylon, the Great and Globalism, uh, New World Order in, in the brackets right here. Um, it's a very interesting video. Um, and what's most interesting, first of all, we want to show this book right here. We have this book available. This is, uh, this is a reprint of the Church uh, History of Ethiopia. Right, wherein, among other things, the two great splendid Roman missions into that empire are placed in their true light. Right, and it, to which I added, and it goes on, it's by Michael uh, Geddes. Right, a very, very important um, book right here. And in this documentary, The Church History of Ethiopia, there's an excerpt here that we were very surprised to find. Um, and it actually refers to this, which is uh, speaking on Ethiopian Christianity, African history, the half of the so story that's not told. And this is a work from uh, 1696, right, 1696. Um, it's very, very interesting. Basically, it chronicles uh, a church that was never at any time under the papal yoke. And um, in this particular documentary right here, as we pause it right here, we'll give you a little clip of this right now. And they're going to refer to this particular um, book, The Church History of Ethiopia by Michael Geddes. And this is a 1696 testimony that has found its way into this particular documentary, Babylon the Great and Globalism. Open parenthesis, New World Order, close parenthesis. So let's let's hear a little bit. Let's hear a little bit of this right now. Efforts to establish Sunday sacredness. Papists themselves publicly confessed the divine authority of the Sabbath and the solemn origin of the institution by which it had been supplanted. In the 16th century, a papal council plainly declared. Let all Christians remember that the seventh day was consecrated by God and hath been received and observed not only by the Jews but by all others who pretend to worship God. Though we Christians have changed their Sabbath into the Lord's Day, pages 281 and 282. Those who were tampering with the divine law were not ignorant of the character of their work. They were deliberately setting themselves above God. A striking illustration of Rome's policy toward those who disagree with her was given in the long and bloody persecution of the Waldenses, some of whom were observers of the Sabbath. Others suffered in a similar manner for their fidelity to the Fourth Commandment. The history of the churches of Ethiopia and Abyssinia is especially significant. Amid the gloom of the Dark Ages, the Christians of Central Africa were lost sight of and forgotten by the world and for many centuries they enjoyed freedom in the exercise of their faith. But at last Rome learned of their existence, and the emperor of Abyssinia was so beguiled into an acknowledgment of the Pope as the vicar of Christ. Other concessions followed. An edict was issued forbidding the observance of the Sabbath under the severest penalties See Michael Geddes, Church History of Ethiopia, pages 311 and 312. Now, let's pause that right there. The sound went down in the video around that time. But this is, this is the book, right? This is the book that's referenced. And I think we might be one of the few that has a copy of this, a reprint of this, The Church History. Now, this particular book, since it's a 1696 book, one kind of heads up is that, as you can see right here with the uh, the, the, there's like an F or old F or well, it's an S but it looks like an F and that might throw some readers off when they see that but once you kind of just recognize that it becomes very very easy to read and understand but this is an invaluable part of um, both church history and biblical history explain the half of the story that hasn't been told as well as the link with the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Ketamawi Haile Selassie, the elect of God, the king of kings of Ethiopia, as I and I say, Ja Rastafari. So let's see a little bit more of this, right, or listen and see a little bit more of this. We continue. This is Babylon the Great 
um, and globalism, open parenthesis, new world order, close parenthesis. The papal tyranny soon became a yoke so galling that the Abyssinians determined to break it from their trouble. The Romanists were banished from their dominions, and the ancient faith was restored. The churches rejoiced in their freedom, and they never forgot the lesson they had learned concerning the deception, the fanaticism, and the despotic power of Rome. Within their solitary realm, they were content to remain unknown to the rest of Christendom. The churches of Africa held the Sabbath as it was held by the papal church before her complete apostasy. While they kept the seventh day in obedience to the commandment of God, they abstained from labor on the Sunday in conformity to the custom of the church. Upon obtaining supreme power, Rome had trampled upon the Sabbath of God to exalt her own. But the churches of Africa, hidden for nearly a thousand years, did not share in this apostasy. When brought under the sway of Rome, they were forced to set aside the true and exalt the false Sabbath. But no sooner had they regained their independence than they returned to obedience to the fourth commandment. These records of the past clearly reveal the enmity of Rome toward the true Sabbath and its defenders, and the means which she employs to honor the institution of her creating. The Word of God teaches that these scenes are to be repeated as Roman Catholics and Protestants shall unite for the exaltation of the Sunday. The prophecy of the okay, just, just faith right. was restored. The churches rejoiced in their freedom, and they never forgot the lesson they had learned concerning the deception, the fanaticism, and the despotic power of Rome. Within their solitary realm, they were content to remain unknown to the rest of Christendom. The Church of Africa held the Sabbath as it was held by the papal church before her complete apostasy. While they ordinances, some of whom were observers of the Sabbath, Others suffered in a similar manner for their fidelity to the Fourth Commandment. The history of the churches of Ethiopia and Abyssinia is especially significant. Amid the gloom of the Dark Ages, the Christians of Central Africa were lost sight of and forgotten by the world, and for many centuries they enjoyed freedom in the exercise of their faith. But at last Rome learned of their existence, and the Emperor of Abyssinia was so beguiled into an acknowledgment of the Pope as the Vicar of Christ. Other concessions followed, and edict was issued forbidding the observance of the Sabbath under the severest penalties. See Michael Geddes, Church History of Ethiopia, pages 3.11 and 3.12. The papal tyranny soon became a yoke so galling that the Abyssinians determined to break it from their trouble. The Romanists were banished from their dominions, and the ancient faith was restored. The churches rejoiced in their freedom, and they never forgot the lesson they had learned concerning the deception, the fanaticism, and the despotic power of Rome. Within their solitary realm, they were content to remain unknown to the rest of Christendom. The churches of Africa held the Sabbath as it was held by the papal church before her complete apostasy. By the papal church before her complete Sabbath as it was Now that that's very that's very interesting and very telling there as well. We just saw um, I don't know if this computer's freezing right here, but what we want to show here is this right here as well. Um, another reprint of the society lojsociety.org. You can visit us if you want to purchase the other book as well. You can find that as well in our books in our bookstore. Now this is the Queen of Sheba and only son Minulik. All right, this is one of our reprints right here. Now, it's kind of interesting because um, there's chapter 93. You can see it down here. I don't know if it's very clear. But it basically explains how the men of Rome or Byzantium destroyed the faith. So we're seeing testimony, right, to the Ethiopian, right, as it says, Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands to God. And we find that this documentary right here, which we highly recommend, you check it out, as well as this particular work right here, once again, The Church History of Ethiopia. All right, so Shalom Rastafari, and keep the Shabbat. Remember to keep the Shabbat. Shalom.